This presentation is an overview of Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Operations. I'll be calling it D365 to shorten that. D365 is a fully integrated, complete ERP browser-based application. It is capable of managing a variety of global corporations as well as a variety of industries. It also enables businesses to redesign their business processes and to follow best practices. The user view of D365 is familiar and easy to learn and navigate. This demonstration will focus on an introduction to D365 and the user navigation and experience of working within the application. We will start at the home page. This home page contains items called workspaces. Workspaces are groupings of the most commonly used functions in each module. These can be accessed via the home page, or they can be accessed via the navigation bar. This navigation pane not only shows the individual workspaces listed here in alphabetical order, but it also shows the modules and the workspaces associated with individual modules. For example, I'm looking at procurement and sourcing, and here are two workspaces that are associated with procurement and sourcing. In a listing of the modules, I can also add favorites. So if I know that I'm going to be in purchase orders a lot and I want to see them all, I can click on here and it'll add it to my favorites. Recent also gives me the access to say, where have I been? What have I been looking at lately? If I want to go to the home page at any point in time, I can just click the operations button and it will take me there. From this home page, I also have the ability to see work items that are currently assigned to me. This is via the workflow. If I click on them, it will open up that specific order and allow me to go ahead and approve it after I've reviewed it. So I can approve the workflow. I can put comments in as I'm approving it. And once I do that, it disappears from my notifications page. From the home screen, we also have the ability to switch entities if there's more than one and to set our individual user options. Here under the user options, I have the ability to make the browser look differently and to change the size. I also have the ability to change the language that I'm working in. So for example, if I change this to French and then I save it, and refresh my browser. When I come back in, all of the languages will be in French. So you can actually use the system and work in the language that you're most comfortable in. So now everything is in French. It's the same functionality of the same modules, however, the French language is available for me to use. So I'm going to switch it back to English. And I'm going to save it and refresh the browser again. Once I've done that, I can also go and look at the other options that are available to my user. So here, I also have the ability to set up email notifications to designate someone to be my approver while I'm on vacation here in the delegation box. In order to delegate someone, I can set when it's active and I can also indicate which functionality I want that person to approve for me. From here, we're going to go to the Operations tab and go back to the home screen. Now let's say we want to look at a project. I'm going to go to a specific project called Camp Winterization in my All Projects list. And I want to see if there's anything outstanding as far as purchase orders. So I'm going to click on the Control and I'm going to be able to see my committed costs. And this shows any purchase orders that are confirmed and outstanding and ready for um, receipt. If I want to look at creating a new purchase order or requisition, 
I'm going to go to Manage, and I'm going to go to Item Task, and I'm going to create a new requisition. So my requisition is going to be for acquiring blanket, let's say. And I'm going to leave the requested date and everything else to default. When I click OK, I can see that it opens up the requisition screen. Now it's already filled in the header based on the information I gave it. And now I'm going to click on Add Line. And under Category, I'm going to select um, under Workplace Services, we'll select Cleaning, for example. This list will primarily be something that's specific to an individual company. So I'm just going to call it Blankets. And I'm going to buy, let's say, 100 of them. And I'm going to buy 100 each. If I had boxes or something else that I was going to buy, I would choose that unit instead. So let's say they're $50 each, which is quite pricey for a blanket. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my general ledger distribution is set. So I'm going to distribute. Now it'll default from all the setups, but I just want to double check. Yep, that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this requisition, but I got a message. So that message was a budget check error. So I'm going to show that again. And it says that budget check passed, but there's a warning. And it says that budget checks, budget funds are not available for this specific GL account. So it's telling me how much it's over budget, including this transaction, and I can see the information about this budget error right here. So I know I'm over budget, but I'm going to reallocate funds, or I'm okay with being over budget. I'm going to submit this to Workflow, and it's going to process based on the settings that I have. I'm going to submit this to Workflow. When I do that, I'll get a notification again that the budget funds available have been exceeded. I'm going to submit anyway, and I'm going to say please approve as I will be transferring funds. Or if you want to just leave it over budget, that's certainly an option. But the system does have the ability to control the budget and to even stop processing if we so chose. So now I've submitted it to Workflow, and it's going to route based on the Workflow setup that exists in the system. So I have this open here. This is the Purchase Requisition Review, the Workflow. This Workflow is set up to first check a conditional decision, and if it's evaluated as true, it would come over here and actually invoke another Workflow. Or if it's evaluated as false, it would just come to the final approval step. So we can use that for setting limits and thresholds and things like that. So now this particular requisition, if I check the actual setup, I can see who is this assigned to. So I can assign this to a hierarchy, meaning um, people that I report to and it can route based on that. I can assign it to individual users, as this one is, or I can assign it to groups of users. So in this case, I have it assigned to Inga and Sarah. And I have a requirement under my little completion policy here that one person needs to approve it. So if either Sarah or Inga approves it, then we'll be able to move forward with the requisition and convert it into a purchase order. So I'm going to close out of the workflow. And back here on my requisition, if I want to see the assignment of the individual users, I can click on Workflow, and then I can click on View History. So now I can see that it's assigned to Inga and Sarah. And since I want to route this and get this uh, requisition completed while we're doing this demo, I'm going to reassign it to myself. Obviously, normally this is not the process that you would take and not everyone is going to have access to be able to do this kind of functionality. So I'm going to assign it to myself. I'm going to say reassign. And then if I refresh, I'll actually be able to approve this workflow. So you can see that now it's assigned to me. I'm going to close this out. And under workflow, I have the ability to approve it now. 
So I've approved this requisition, and I'm not going to put a comment in. And notice it gives me another note. By the way, you're still over budget. So I'm going to go ahead and approve this, and then I'm going to go see it appear in the completed requisitions and the ability show the ability to turn it into a purchase order. So once my requisition has been approved, I'm going to go to Approved Requisition Processing, and I'm just going to release it and create a purchase order. So once I do that, if I have a vendor and everything set up, I can click on New Purchase Order, and it would create a purchase order. Now, you'll note that when I click New at this point, it says, wait, you don't have a vendor assigned? So I'm going to select a vendor. And my vendor is going to be, let's see, ABC Wash Supply. When I click OK, it's actually going to go out and create the new purchase order. And it's going to tell me the purchase order number and the information around it. And oh, by the way, it gives me another requirement or another notification that we are over budget. So you'll get several times that it'll remind you that you're over budget, both you and the individuals actually approving the requisitions. And this budget processing is throughout the entire system. In addition to the standard easy to use browser interface, Dynamics 365 for Operations also offers a mobile app where you can approve requisitions, purchase orders, or anything that needs to be run through workflow. Because of the flexibility of the browser-based app, the availability of Dynamics 365 for Operations is global and easy to deploy.